Invest in the future of energy and do it with the ease of an ETF. I'm Skylar James, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about futuristic batteries, solar power, electric cars, windmills. There are so many stocks poised to break out. How do you know which one to pick? I say, let the smart money ETFs choose for you. You just have to evaluate which bag of goodies is the best fit for you. Today, I'm looking at two of the strongest choices in this ETF space, QClean and ACES. In this video, we'll discuss why these two are winners and which small difference might lead to massive outperformance. My previous clean energy ETF video was an analysis similar to this, but it included a special custom filter that ruled out several funds right off the bat. That filter was having a cap on Tesla exposure. I wouldn't accept anything more than a 5% Tesla allocation in my renewable energy ETF. That led me to selecting PBW from Invesco and iClean from iShares. Check out that video if you need a refresher on those products. But things have gotten a little spicy since I made that video. In fact, Tesla just announced they netted a billion dollars. That was the first time Musk engineered such a haul, and it's 10 times what the company netted a year ago. Now that we've gotten some real earnings, not to mention the stock being down some 20% from its all-time high, I'm willing to take Tesla off the naughty list and give another look to those renewable energy ETFs that didn't make the cut the first time. Here are the main players in the renewable energy ETF space. Every time we talk about ETFs, you'll hear me preach that we should follow the money. Follow those ETFs with the most assets under management because once an ETF, especially these niche ETFs, start to gain asset momentum, they tend to have an outsized influence on the space for years to come. You have to consider that those cute little ETFs have wide bid and ask spreads and a tough time competing on fees with the big boys at the top. We already know about PBW and iClean from my first video, so I won't cover them here. And TAN, that's T-A-N, an intriguing play, is solar specific, but I'm more interested in a diverse approach, so I'll rule that one out too. Beyond that, I'm gonna rule out the smaller funds and just focus on the two AUM leaders that remain. That's QClean and ACES. They're diverse, well-established, and spoiler alert, they're both great funds. Many of you have commented on my channel about how much you like QClean. I used to hold ACES personally before divesting into just PBW and iClean. So this begs two questions. How are QClean and ACES different and which is worth owning. Let's quickly run through the ETF screener. Assets under management, these are two of the biggest ETFs in a crowded sector of funds. 2.6 billion in QClean, 950 million in ACES. Yes, QClean has lured triple the investing dollars compared to what ACES has, but QClean had an 11 year head start to do so. Both of these ETFs are old enough and firmly established enough that we know they aren't on the verge of closing down. So how stable is the ETF issuer? Alps, who manages ACEs, is a pretty obscure issuer, while First Trust is one of the biggest ETF players on the planet. We don't have a reason to question Alps per se. I mean, this ETF is holding 950 million and is index based. I don't think we carry much risk in owning it, but this is part of the screener and a dead honest evaluation is that Alps is a nobody in the ETF space, but they have this loved, well-performing and well-funded product in ACEs. In short, I don't see ETF issuer being a risk in this case. Portfolio geography for these two? Both QClean and ACEs hold mainly US listed companies with a small representation from Canada. How about the top 10 concentration? What's that looking like? Well. 55% and 50% respectively. Overall, that's a thumbs up. If you saw my recent analysis on crop ETF, you know that crop has a 76% of its assets in the top 10. And finally, the last screener, the S&P 500 dummy check. Both of these ETFs are vastly different from the more less expensive large cap index like VOO. This is just a dummy check to make sure we don't fork over special fees for a plain old fund. 
But this is like a movie we've already seen before. We already knew these ETFs were going to pass that test, but notice that so far, nothing has jumped out that says one of these two ETFs is better to hold than the other. Nothing about the way these two ETFs are wrapped sets one apart from the other. Now, let's line up the holdings inside the ETF starting with market cap, where QClean boasts triple the large cap stocks compared to what ACES is holding. Do large caps grow slower than small and mid caps? That's a genuine question. Do you think this still holds true? In the age of mega cap tech players, who knows if that old adage is even true anymore. Both ETFs are arranged in a market cap weighted structure, but with some limitations on the maximum weight any singular stock can hold in the index on rebalance. For ACEs, that's 5%. QClean, it's up to 8% in the top five. This is just a roundabout way of saying QClean is leaning heavier on the bigger companies while suppressing the smaller holdings in the portfolio. Is that an issue? Well, that's for you to decide. It isn't a game-changing revelation for me. What's especially interesting in how these ETFs are built, both of them, is that ne neither allocates percentages to specific areas of renewable energy. Said another way, neither index claims to dedicate a certain percentage of the fund to EVs or solar or to battery developers. The index says, sure, these are the types of companies we're gonna invest in and include. They have to be getting revenue from clean energy, but they don't compartmentalize or place any caps based on industry. Or niche. This is immediately noticeable as you start to evaluate the holdings. QClean hits you right in the face with that automotive flavor, whereas ACES represents more of a broad approach to clean energy. And the fund paperwork backs up what we plainly see. First Trust says 22% of QClean ETF is focused on automotives, compared to roughly 12% in ACES. And when you get further into the differences, Albemarle isn't present at all in ACEs. They're a big time lithium and bromine supplier. In fact, Albemarle is the top holding of the lithium ETF from Global X at over 12%. That gives you a sense of how significant Albemarle is in this space, and it doesn't even sit inside ACEs. But again, return to where we started. We figured out that QClean tilts toward large cap companies. The biggest companies will get an outsized representation in QClean Holdings. And QClean dedicates twice as much of their fund to autos as does ACEs. That double allocation doesn't even include lithium processors. Check, check, check. So where am I going with this? We've now firmly locked in that EV exposure is a major difference between QClean and ACEs. It's one thing for us to pick apart the top 10 holdings. It's another for us to waste time looking at the bottom 20%. The performance of Orion Energy Systems and Green Power Motor Company aren't going to determine whether these ETFs are triple baggers or quadruple baggers between now and 2030. They just aren't. So don't get cute trying to make big picture investment decisions based on these little tiny constituents. Instead, remember, this is a market cap weighting system and the firms that look like they're steering performance are steering it. Stop, this is a great opportunity to go over what both of these funds do have in their holdings. It's the like button. You know, the thumbs up at the bottom of the screen. Yep, I guess it's a renewable source. So both of them have it. I'd suggest you add it to your portfolio as well. Don't go overboard, no more than 10, but you really should add at least one, and I'd appreciate it. Okay, two final points to evaluate, and these are important. The first is past performance. Not indicative of future performance, of course, but you can see that QClean has outperformed ACEs handily in every time frame listed on this chart. And now that we've gone through the differences in the composition of QClean and ACEs, any guesses what led to QClean's outperformance? Yes, all the investing dollars that are pouring into EVs are pouring into QClean's outsized allocation to automotives and is driving the outperformance of that ETF. I bet you guys got to that conclusion before I did. Which leads into the final point of this analysis, which ETF is the right choice. Well, to me, 
investors should ask themselves one question. Do I want electric vehicle exposure in my renewable energy ETF? There are a few reasons an investor might want to skip QCLEAN's EV exposure. Look, that's not cut and dry. We each have unique portfolios. Maybe you already hold Tesla or want a pure play EV ETF, or you think traditional automakers are gonna crank it into gear and actually put out good EV products. The moral of this story is that choosing between QCLEAN and ACES comes down to our individual preferences, hunches, research, and appetites. My analysis says these are both great funds poised for awesome growth, but the EV exposure is what sets them apart. Based on this, which would you choose? Let's chat about it in the comments below.